Well, yeah, I remember when I was a, a postdoc researcher at MIT, the Artificial Intelligence Lab. The, and then I had um, some idea of how to do calculations for a tactile sensor. And it was uh, some calculations I was doing. It was, you know, started this calculation. At the beginning, the equation was four pages long. And uh, little by little, I had simplifications and, and, and things were coming together so nicely that at the end the formula was like uh, less than one line and I remember that moment where things were just coming together so nicely uh, that was very happy and also showed somehow that, it, that I, I had to be right because things do not happen by chance in some sense when, when I mean there, there is some aesthetics in research you feel when things are right and when, when things are, and typically when things get simple, they tend to be right. I, I always uh, like to fix things. That is my hobby uh, when I was uh, young and uh, uh, growing up, I always uh, like to try new things and try to see whether this could work also that way or uh, um, and, and making things work. That has been always my uh, delight in, in some sense. So I think, I, I guess I'm an engineer uh, in this sense, uh, even more than, than, than the pure scientist definition. I'm not just a not just contemplative, I like to understand things by doing. I've always have been a little bit of a, um, a rebel in, in, a, in, in, in a very mild sense, I must say, but uh, uh, always trying to you know, discuss and see whether things that I was told were true or not. So I think this is part of being a researcher, even, even though the, the person could be a, you know, a most conservative political, but if you are a researcher, you must be a rebel at heart somehow. And uh, that's what, what the closest, I knew that I would do something that would you know, uh, guarantee my freedom or have freedom as, a, uh, as an ingredient of what we do. I think robotics is, uh, very interesting uh, theme. It's not my only research topic. I, I, I do also control, automatic control in a more theoretical sense. If you want, there is more math and more formal uh, methods there, which is very important, I think. There is nothing more practical than a good theory. But robotics, on the other hand, as a, um, it's very fun. And it is a very mixed environment where you can find and talk to people of different uh, backgrounds. So what is very nice about robotics is that uh, there is no purity. It's a really a melting pot. Whatever you do, you are at home in robotics. And this is a very nice uh, adventure intellectually to be in the middle of such a babel of languages where things happen. Well, when I got the ERC, this is an advanced grant. It goes only to people who have some gray hairs. Uh, so I was already a professor, if you want. So to some people, could have been already you know, enough uh, from the career viewpoint, uh, strictly speaking. Uh, so it's not from that, from that part, from that uh, side that I took it, but from the point of view the, of the accomplishments uh, of the scientific, uh, of the fulfillment of, of, of my own scientific uh, goals has been very, very important. At the starting point, when I, when I wrote the project, we had an idea of how to use some theoretical um, basis to build a new generation of hands. Uh, but going from that 
ideas that were in the proposal to the realization of the hand was made possible by the ERC grant. And during the development of the robotic hand, we saw that, yes, it's a good robotic hand, but it also has a potential for prosthetics. And thanks to the flexibility of the grant, we could steer part of the project towards making prosthetics, which is still a very good uh, objective of research. Indeed, in the final part of the, of the grant, we also applied to another kind of grant from the ERC, which is called the Proof of Concept. And that smaller grant, we devoted to the development of the prosthetic hand. So by this, uh, by this means, we have now uh, a robotic hand that is going to be, that is used in industries, and a prosthetic hand that is instead used by patients. This is a, a version of the hand that uh, has been realized. This is actually a nice present that uh, the, the, the startup, the spin-off uh, that came, up, uh, came out from this project uh, gave me as a present for my birthday. Uh, and it's transparent and, and uh, is not the real thing. It also has a platform here to stand on your table. Uh, but this is, uh, uh, this is basically it. It has five fingers. It, it's very flexible, as you can see. It's uh, soft in this sense. And uh, it's, even, it's even robust in the sense that you can hit it. And that was the challenge that we started with. Have something that can really hit the environment. You don't do this with a regular hand. Otherwise, you break it. The hand that we have is very different from all other prostheses. Um, it's, uh, I'm not saying whether it is better or, 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 or worse, but it's completely different. It is compliant, it adapts to the objects, while all other processes are, are rigid. It has less degrees of freedom in some, in some sense. It's simple to control, but it also has uh, the flexibility to adapt. So it's a completely different concept and the amputees have to use it in a different way. So at the very beginning we were not sure that they would accept it. All the inspiration for the hand design comes from the uh, human hand design or human hand uh, physics and control uh, as far as we understand them. So that was a good part of it because the fact that the hand was so anthropomorphic helped the patients to use it in a natural way. Uh, patients appreciated the hand for things that we didn't really design it for. Like for instance, you never think of a prosthesis in the function of touching your own body. Um, but you do many times use the hand for touching yourself, doing things like this. right? And this is impossible with the, one of the traditional hands, the traditional rigid hands. You don't touch your face with a rigid Thing that is basically you know, metallic or even if it's covered, it's, it's rigid. While with our hand, we found patients doing things like this. And they, were, they themselves were saying, oh, I can do things that I couldn't do before. And this was uh, you know, good. I must, uh, I must say that when we first had the first patients using the hand and appreciating the hand and uh, showing that it was useful to them, it's been one of the best times in my career, most fulfilling.